Defensive coordinator, Jordan Leslie. Questions for Coach Leslie? Greg? This is Jordan. Start with the, uh, you know, the matchup with their offensive coordinator. New offensive coordinator. Uh, you've seen him in the past, but how do you marry the talent and the personnel they have at Penn State that you saw with the coordinator and what he does? Uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how much of the, <clears throat> the carryover from Kansas to Penn State, because the personnel is, is uh, you know, if you just look at what's, what's returning, it's uh, quite a bit different um, than how he used the personnel at Kansas. So, you know, it's really kind of a, you know, I, I would say a vanilla approach and then and then go see early in the game what it is, you know. And, you know but, but it's going to be the same, I would think it would be the same type structure, a lot of, a lot of moving pieces, a lot of eye candy, and alignment's going to be key. And so, uh, but he's he's uh, got a lot of respect for him. He does a does a phenomenal job. Did you get too far down the rabbit hole with what he's done in the past, even going back to Buffalo and things like that? Yeah, I mean, you, you look at a little bit of everything, um, and kind of the changes. With uh, I, I think the best thing that he does is he does what his personnel can do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you look at the. You know, we know the the personnel well. Uh, most of the production from last year's back, uh, you know, it's the running backs, tight end. So, you know, we're familiar with that. That's what, interesting because um, Neil mentioned, you know, you go back to the Buffalo to find a match between what Andy does and what the quarterback's capable of doing. I mean, obviously, Aller's different than Daniels was when he had Kansas. So, I mean, I guess that's something to go off a little bit because that's what he's got. Right, and and like I said, he I'm sure there's some. He's been creative everywhere he's been, so I'm sure there's some some creative things that he's going to do with with Drew and and the running backs and tight ends and those guys, and so, um, and I'm and you know, got that other quarterback that is yeah. very similar to what he's had. So, um, and and I would expect to to see those. So, we'll uh, and but like I said, you're just going to have to. I'll know at noon Saturday. Yeah. You know, or, or 12.05 or whatever it's going to be. Uh, Neil said he didn't go to Penn State because he didn't have players. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> Jordan, a lot of talk of, like, hoping the fans get really loud when WVU's on defense to kind of disrupt what Penn State wants to do on offense. But for you, I mean, do you want that to be a little bit, that noise level a little bit lower just so you no. can get the play call in? Or you, no. You want, okay. No, I think they'll, you know, and I challenge, you know, our fans, um, I think that that could be a big, a big factor in the game, um, you know, and not not only when things are um, are going good, you know. I mean, they they have good players, you know, those running backs. They're, they're you know, all all across their offense, receiver, tight end, quarterbacks, good player, and and they're gonna make they're gonna make some plays, you know. They're they're gonna be they're a good team, um, so you know, just like I tell our players, this next play mentality, um, and I think our I think our fans, you know, carry that same. That same mindset into it um, can be a huge factor, um, you know. I, and everybody's asked me that because of the, you know, no, be as loud as you can be. You, you look at uh, Penn State. Obviously, they got some new guys on offensive line. They lost their tackle last year, but does it start with Dawkins and Warmly? And I did read somewhere. I think Franklin said he's got eight that he feels good that he can rotate in and out there. Is that what you see? Yeah, I think they will. I think they'll. Uh, um, I think probably <clears throat> just kind of reading the reading the media stuff. Like I think they probably feel good who the five are, and I think they'll rotate some guys. I think I know there's some young guys that they like, but I think there's we're expecting you know seven eight. What do you see from Warmly? He's been a guy that's been there a long time. He's kind of <coughs> their guard, uh, their right guard. Uh, you know, really strong. Um, he uh, he's good at staying on his tracks. Powerful at the point of contact. It does a good job. It's as warm as they expect Saturday. You're going to need your depth. Um, you comfortable with where you're at? You've talked about that throughout preseason. So we're, where are you depth with? Yeah, I think yeah, we're comfortable with it. I mean, we've, you know, some things, um, um, some guys have really made some strides uh, in that second group, particularly, you know, last year we've talked about linebacker. You know, that's something that we feel good right there with our depth. Um, and corner and safety. This is this is the best we've felt going into a season. Um, and then the defensive line. You know, we've we've been rotating guys for 
you know, three or four years like that. So um, feel feel pretty good about it. And one guy I mentioned, tight end, big target, similar size wise to Colt. Mm -hmm. um, what is the tight end? What's the issues there with him? Yeah, so I, I bragged on on him the same. Yeah time last year uh, and he and he was a backup but he had put some things on film where you're like whoa you know and and he is he's he's a guy um and how um Andy will use him um it'll probably be some there'll be some very creative uh ways he'll use him some moving pieces he's really good at finding matchups um so we've got to just kind of play the chess match to to get the ones we like uh but he he is a he's definitely somebody you circle when you watch film a couple times. I mean, the questions are inevitable with their offensive coordinator, but it's not like he's just going to put the, the Kansas playbook in and go. I get that. And you said he's good at matchups. When you know a guy or don't know a guy who's calling plays, is that where you start, or do you look somewhere else like, all right, how do I get to know this guy and what makes him tick? Yeah, I mean, you, you watch, you know, I always like to watch a game, you know, a couple of games, just kind of try to get a general feel. Then everything you do from that point is just situationally. Um, and what are the personnels, what are the play sets? And then that, you know, get to that point, then you're, what are the moving pieces? What are the, um, so, and that's really where you, in my opinion, you get to know the guys and the key situations that you, whatever you think those are, um, that's what you study and, and you just go from there. And then it's, if, it's, if it's a game one, a new guy, then, you know, you gotta be careful where, how far down that rabbit hole you go. and. You know, really just get your defense lined up, shed blocks, make tackles. Turn back to depth a little bit. Last year, because circumstances, you didn't rotate linebackers and, and corners very much. You just didn't have the personnel. Do you anticipate with better depth that you rotate regularly, or do you still go with the hot hand? And what do you think? Uh, it just depends on the floor of the game and where um, and what that looks like. And what do you? Um, What's, you start to kind of see what their plan is, and um, we would like to be able to rotate, um, but whether you, you get into it and there's something that you're, you know, you're having to adjust to with you want your best players, you know, making those adjustments first. And so, um, but we'd like to. We'd like to be able to rotate guys more than we have. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of talk about last year's game, third and fourth down uh, uh, situations that they did. They may have won the game right there, and that's compared to what your offense did. How do you approach that? How do you approach from one year to the next when that is something you have to improve? Well, the third and fourth down is starts on first down. You know, you you, you have to, uh, you know, that's, <clears throat> you know, I went back and watched the Kansas game from 22, and that was one of the big glaring things was third and four, five, and six, and being able to get off the field in those situations. Um, now we're, you know, we're quite a bit different than we were then, especially personnel wise. Um, but th that's, those are, those situations are how you played first down. Um, and that's where, that's where you have to get into a favorable situation starts back and then being smart on second down, you know, I mean, it all, it all ties in together. Um, but what offenses like to do, particularly him, you know, third, you know, third in that medium range is, is, is tough and, and you got to get the right, get them in the right position and, and execute the play um, based on whatever it may be, the, the down distance, the field zone, red zone, backed up, whatever, coming out, whatever it is. So um, that's, that's going to be key. I know lineups are people uh, are getting close to, to the vest with it. I don't know if Penn State will give you a too deep. I'm not sure you'll give one out. But my question is, is it your guys, were there a lot of uh, position battles where they were like really close? Or were they clear cut? How did it shake out this year to, to what you're going into in this game? It was extremely competitive. At most, most every position. Um, you know, particularly, you know, linebacker and secondary. Um, and, you know, and, and we create that. Um, well, you create that through you know, whatever you're recruiting, high school, or portal, whatever. Um, and that's the only thing that's that really creates it is guys know that now I have good players around me. And so I have to perform and execute every day. Um, and so that's where, you know, through the spring, we saw it in some positions, but fall camp, 
it was spread throughout the whole defense, which is a good thing. Um, and there were some really, really tight, there were some really tight battles. I'm assuming last year that wasn't necessarily the case going into the opener. No. How much of an advantage is it for you to have the game last year under your belt? Obviously, there's a lot of changes we've talked about, but you do have that direct film. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's, I think our guys, um, really last year, if you look at going into the locker room at halftime and the things we had talked about, um, you know, we forced, I think it was two missed field goals um, and we're, we're right there in it. And I, and I don't think our, and our kids really didn't blink um, in, in that environment, which was tough. And, and you know, was a third play of the game is a touchdown. And, you know, they didn't, they didn't panic. They didn't freak out. And, um, and so, you know, kind of you see that same feeling with these guys going in. But it but obviously helps, you know, just knowing, you know, an opponent. I don't know, when was the last time before last year? Does anybody know? When was 92. 92, you know, so that's a long time. Um, yeah. And just now they got that year. I mean, our guys know who Penn State is, obviously, any college football fan does. But being on the field with them and seeing that, and you know, it can't hurt. Off of kind of what John was bringing up, especially with a guy like Burks, kind of a different role, a little bit on the defense positionally. Is a game like this going to be able to call for switching things up at halftime? Like if a starter is just not getting it done, will you be able to switch things up, or is that harder to do in a game like this? But you don't want to let a game get away from you. No, I mean it really just depends on the flow of the game um, and and what's you know what's going on, or um, but. If that's the case with a with a um, with a starter or, or one of our really good players, then, then we have options. And we just next guy. Not going to change. You know, don't have to change the whole defense because right. one guy's not performing well. You know, if that's that's what kind of what you're asking. Yeah, especially yeah. in a game like this, where it sure. doesn't perform well in one or two plays, that game could unravel. Yeah. No, we don't. We're just next next guy in. Jordan, the, the body types, the. the types of players that you've brought in here over the last, just say, two years, especially via the transfer portal or high school recruiting. Obviously, you're trying to win Big 12 games, but is this the type of game when you're, it's going to be very physical that you're kind of recruiting guys that can win in that style of game? Is that fair? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's you know, that the body type, the mentality that you recruit, that's as much of a part of the evaluation because if you're going, if you're going to make toughness and effort and physicality if that's one of your core, you know, which it is for us, um, one of your core beliefs, your core values, well, then it, it's hard to take somebody that doesn't have that and make them that. So, but, you know, and then there's, there is a physical piece of that, you know, a body type piece. So, yeah, we've been intentional about that in the evaluation process. When you look at them personal-wise, and I guess when you start comparing them to teams that you played in the past, I mean, would you – you mentioned Texas, Oklahoma. Would that be the types of athletes and players that you're dealing with? Yes, very similar. Okay. You're, um, you were curious about this. Now it sounds like you're confident. Like you kind of got to where you thought you were going to go. Are there players, young, old, new, that that kind of made this possible? Like a, a returning player who brought everybody along, or somebody who was a redshirt freshman or a newcomer that pushed a position along where you feel so good about your depth and you're, you're too deep. Yeah, I think that um, especially at linebacker, we've talked about. We talked about Trot, and you know would have been a would have been a significant contributor with how last year played out. Um, but he's used the time to, to rehab, and he's had a great spring. Um, and there's a guy the the a big difference in Ben Cutter, just probably playing a role that he wasn't ready for, but um, <clears throat> which you know hurt him in a lot of situations last year, but helps him helps him now um, down the road. Um, you know, if you look at you look at up front, I think Fatorma has really um, made a significant strides from the first year playing a position that he didn't play there, playing it now. And then we've talked about Hammond Russell, um, Sonny Redwood. Um, those guys have have um, have really really taken strides and just in just simple things. You know, playing D line. Um, Jacoby Spells is a, is a guy that I've talked about, uh, and, and the improvement he's made. Um, just being a, just being more, just playing faster, understanding, um, you know, the depth, the, the totality of the defense, and, and it shows in how he moves and how he plays. So, yeah, there's some, there's some guys, um, 
you know, and the transfer wise, um, you know, Garnett's done a good job. TJ Jackson's a good pickup, you know, so there's, there's a lot of guys that have made, had good fall camps and made some strides. Just your wide receivers, um, from some of the guys you're familiar with, some of them have cycled out, but uh, the Fleming guy from Ohio State, what what do you know about him and what did you? Smooth. Yeah. Real smooth, big, um, great hands, uses his body in his route running. Um, and, you know, anytime you have a big, you know, they go, same thing, he was asking me about body types on our size, you know, those those guys create some issues out on the edge, especially in what they like to do with their offense. So, really good player. Thank you, guys. Hmm? Thank you all.